All right, everyone, welcome to the studio. Uh, we're gonna test my uh, old school uh, salesman technique of, uh, of uh, hi-fi, high-end uh, audio equipment here because we've got a lot of different things we're gonna tackle in this one video, all of which do the same thing. So these are all high-resolution streaming amplifiers, right? So this is what we would use to power our Dynaudio Emits, Evokes, our PSB, P3, P5s, or whatever other speaker you have. And I've spent a, a uh, yeah, okay, I don't want to admit how much time I've spent on this. <laughs> Hundreds of hours, at least, uh, just out of pure desire to figure this out for myself. Uh, what do I want to use in my house and in my garage? These are not just garage specific. These can be used anywhere. Uh, but what um, what would I want? What products am I interested in most? Uh, and I've chased this pretty hard. I've looked at a bunch of other different brands, a bunch of di a bunch of different uh, options or types of players. And these are there's really six of them. I'm going to talk about five of them here today because the NAD M33 needs its own video. That that thing is not going to be purchased often for garages, but we'll still have some people who want to do it the same way I do it. The M33 is in my garage at my house, uh, if that you know makes any, um, makes any sense uh, for you. Uh, if you want to replicate what I have, um, I have a pair of Dynaudio Heritage Specials and then the NAD M33 and Direct Calibrated for my garage. It sounds awesome with two Dynaudio you know, $2,400 sub sixes in the garage. So I know there's some of you that will want to do that too. Uh, but for this video, I want to talk about more practical, still on the high end, certainly for a garage, but I want to talk about practical stuff. So what I'm looking for, this is the requisite, uh, what I'm looking for in the garage is that I want to be able to use my phone, not as the player, but as a remote control via Wi-Fi. So I want to connect directly to the device and I want to be able to stream either Cobuzz high res, you know, 24 bit, 192 kilohertz off of that, or um, MQA, which is a different, you know, different technique for high res audio, which Tidal uses, uh, which is also 24192. Uh, and so I want to be able to play FLAC files, I want to play high res wave files, I want to play whatever, whatever the highest resolution file is. I want to, I want my phone to control that. I don't want to need a remote, I don't need a remote control for any of this. I want to be able to just play my speakers, turn the, you know, go walk, turn the thing on or turn it on for my phone and then use my phone to just tell it what to play. And so I've had, uh, I had Sonos in my last house. Uh, I've had, you know, many different types of Bluetooth speakers. And of course I've had lots of audio equipment over the years. If you don't know this, uh, from 2000 to 2005, uh, I spent every woke, waking moment of my life completely immersed in selling, designing, and staying you know, sort of on the forefront of home theater. Of course, that was you know, 15, 16, 17 years ago, coming up on 17 years ago, I spent most of my career after that at uh, Merrill Lynch. Uh, but audio has been my first love, and, uh, and there's nothing like experiencing uh, audio in the garage. That's where I listen to audio second most. The car would be first, the garage would be second most, uh, and uh, I don't ever listen to music in my living room or my home theater or anywhere else. So uh, this is an important spot for me personally, uh, and so hopefully I can impart some of this chaos in my brain and impart some of that knowledge on you. So let's start with right now what is the most uh, I guess the lowest cost version of a of a streaming amplifier, uh, and that's the Blue Sound Node. It comes in black and white. The black shows fingerprints more. The white is going to show dirt more. Certainly, uh, it really just depends on what you're going for. Um, these things. I don't know if they publish a weight here on the site. Um, I have most of this stuff memorized. I'm sure they do. Let's go to specs here. Uh, they're pretty darn light. Uh, let's see, yeah, they're not publishing a weight. General, 6.94 pounds. So these are seven pounds. Now, believe it or not, you can always tell this, if you're not an audio guy and you, you're not sure, <clears throat> if there are binding posts, then there's an amplifier in here. And so believe it or not, this little seven pound device is an amplifier. Uh, and uh, has a headphone jack on the front, has speaker jacks on the back. Uh, this thing is insanely capable. Um, they're publishing this as a, 
uh, let's see, they're publishing or talking about this being a uh, 1.8 gigahertz you know, ARM Cortex A53 processor. So there's a computer inside of this thing. Uh, and then they're packing in some really high-end digital analog converter uh, chipsets. Uh, they're uh, rating in 32-bit, 380 kilohertz. These are, these, that's, the, that's the architecture that, basically the handoff architecture inside of here that creates, uh, takes the digital signal and hands it off to the analog side of things. Uh, these are Class D amplifiers. So they're gonna run really cool. And in the past, Class D was like a death sentence for audio. Uh, you would want Class A, Class AB, uh, even Class C over a Class D amplifier. I don't know too many, um, too many audio amplifiers that publish using a Class C. That's usually garbage. Um, but Class D was generally re reserved for subwoofers uh, or uh, um, implementation where you needed, uh, you didn't need a lot of current, you needed a lot of power and um, had some really efficient speakers. Well now, these things, this little guy is outputting 80 watts per channel. Now, I don't know this for a fact, and I'd like to clarify this, there's a really strong relationship between Blue Sound and NAD. I would guess that there's some NAD, at least influence, on the amplifiers that are in these. I'll clarify that for you. It was just something I was thinking about when I was thinking about making this video. I bet you that NAD is making this thing for, for, for Blue Sound. So, Blue Sound is an alternative of Sonos. Uh, I had gotten Sonos, gotten talked into Sonos um, amplifiers and Sonos um, uh, distribution. Uh, so, using the Sonos app to control and listen to music in my last house with some B&W speakers. Uh, I sort of turned it over to a home theater company, some, some, some friends of mine from back in the day. Uh, and. Um, you know, I, I didn't do my normal obsessing. I just let them set it up and I hated it. The Sonos app was junk. Maybe it's gotten better in the last six or eight months since I, since I had it. I guess I, would, I had it February of this year, so that was what, uh, 10 months ago uh, was the last, last I've, I played with Sonos. So maybe they've done some upgrades. I didn't like how it handed off. I didn't like how it connected to a display, to a TV. Uh, I didn't like how the amplifier sounded. Uh, I really didn't like anything about it. Uh, and uh, so I wasn't really interested in Blue Sound. Blue Sound would be a, an alternative. It's, I think Blue Sound is Canadian. It's, it's, it's represented by Lenbrook, uh, which is a Canadian distrib distributor. That's who I buy them from. I buy them direct from the North American distributor. And um, these, uh, these weren't on my radar uh, until um, I talked to uh, Mike Sajeki, who's my now who's my representative who connects me to, to Lenbrook. And he, uh, he said, look, man, you've got you've to play with the Blue Sound stuff. He's like, I, I know, you know, you didn't, you didn't love Sonos. I know that it, it doesn't get, um, this doesn't get, you know, put into the high-end audio category, but just try it. And I was proven right. I hate all of the Blue Sound uh, wireless speakers, the Flex, the Flex Mini, the um, the Soundbar Plus, the Subwoofer. There, I hate them. They're, I think they're terrible. I, I refuse to sell them. Uh, I don't want anything to do with them. Um, they're, the connectivity is great. They sound just as good as Sonos, which just doesn't sound good to me. That's where Dynaudio Music comes in. But their node and their power node, which this is the power node, the amplified version, is like game-changing, best in class, best in the world. Makes you question why you'd buy a three thousand um, dollar uh, version of something like this. So here that, here's how this goes. You're gonna plug this into the wall. You're gonna take your phone. You're gonna connect it to the device. It's going to run a software update, uh, and Bryce will show you how to do that in a second here. All of these have the exact same setup. We'll actually probably put that in a separate video. So all of the NAD, Blue Sound, they all use the Blue OS app. Everything is driven through that. Super, super simple. So once you do software update, you know it's ready to roll. On top of here are volume controls uh, and um, input switching, which you're never ever going to freaking use. But if you did want to, this is a touch screen on top of the device. Then you're going to connect. You're going to use the Blue OS app to stream. I would recommend you use Tidal. I like the Tidal interface. Uh, CoBuzz, I, I think, is not as uh, robust as Tidal is from a song choice perspective. Uh, you could also use Spotify. Just make sure you swap over to Hi-Res. Um, but Spotify doesn't have 
actually transition or, or make sure you choose the high quality streaming from from Spotify but they don't do high res like uh, like the MQA compression algorithm that um, the title uses or FLAC that I think Cobus Cobus uses uh, everybody likes to say flack I call it FLAC because that's what it is so then you have a choice um, you could put your you know connect network I, I would always run a network cable this if I could because this is a high speed you know streaming device uh, and you'll have less connectivity issues in the future if you run a, a, a LAN connection wired connection but you don't need to uh, it's as stable as your Wi-Fi is in your house this, this will be just as stable then you have the option um, it has like an analog uh, in, which you're probably never going to use. So, I mean, you're not going to be cooking up a CD player or anything like that, that to this, especially if you're doing this in the garage. You're going you're gonna to just put it in on top or in your cabinet. It's Class D, so it won't run super hot. It'll be nice and cool. Even in an air-conditioned garage, you shouldn't have any overheating issues, as long as you're not driving some ridiculous speakers. Uh, and then you can connect a subwoofer and uh, we'll show you how to do that in some of our system setup videos. Make sure to go check out our subwoofer video on the best way to set this up, which was which would use a wireless transmitter receiver for this. Uh, and then if you do want to use um, your television's uh, audio return channel, you can run an HDMI connection to it. Disadvantage, if you want to run, like I want to run Apple TV, you can't connect Apple TV to this unless you connect it with AirPlay and it's really clunky, it doesn't work very well. So I'm going to use this if I'm primarily audio and I am accustomed to using the like WebOS on an LG TV or the Android app, app application on, on Sony. So uh, limitation of these from an amplifier perspective, they're rated at 80 watts per channel. I think that's probably pretty conservative. Um, there's no big toroidal transformer in here. It's not a big high current amplifier, um, but with uh, tech and with the quality of um, an NAD has done most of this heavy lifting for the world, figuring out how to make Class D sound really great and have tons of power without pulling gobs of power out of the wall is pretty remarkable what they've done. I didn't believe it. I wasn't interested in it until I bought some of the stuff and tried it, and it really is extremely low distortion. Now they're able to get plenty of power output from these and it actually sounds good. I spent an hour in here listening on Evoke 20s, which are 86 dB sensitivity. Uh, so they're very uh, relatively inefficient speakers. They're power hogs and it sounded great. It was really hard for me to tell the difference between that and the 150 watt per channel C388. Now, all these amplifiers in here are class D, so you know the, 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 the sound difference between these amplifiers is minimal. Um, but I would I would put this with um, you know with a evoke 10 or below. So evokes emit 10. Uh, I put this with like the, the PSB speakers that we have. Um, certainly if you had clips or something like that, these will do well. Uh, but the Blue OS app, I'm telling you, is the best application. Uh, I like it so much more than Control 4, than Crestron, than Elan, than pretty much any other system. It's easy to hand off. It's easy to run multiple rooms at the same time. No need for volume controls or anything like that. All the volume can be controlled with this. Shoot, you can run a whole house audio distribution system buy a bunch of these uh, it probably costs you less money this this is very similar to like buying a mini split you could run mini splits all throughout your house instead of a central air system uh, and it's more efficient probably costs less uh, but uh, you've got the clunkiness of having a bunch a bunch of units but for your garage this with a pair of PSB P5s it's freaking incredible this is better than running like the AM5s or like the Zeos from Dynaudio wireless you know, speakers. I would much rather have this and a pair of passive speakers and have this amplifier plugged in and playing music for me. So the nodes are uh, 950 bucks right now today at the end of uh, 2021. I suspect they'll continue to rise in price. Uh, they just saw a $50 increase. Uh, so they'll probably you know, go up in price over time. Then we have a couple of uh, these are $1,600 versions. Let me explain to you why you would choose one over the other. So this is the NAD C368 versus the NAD C700. Now this little guy's pretty, right? It's cool, it's compact, it's small. It's got an amazing display. 
um, multicolor display. This one is not touchscreen. Uh, this is rated at 80 watts per channel, but this weighs 22 pounds. Um, this is rated at 80 watts per channel, and this is, um, I want to say, 11, 12 pounds. Should we get the spec for you since we, so we can stay accurate? Uh, let's see here. The C700 is, I was good, 10.6 pounds is the net weight. So, you, the biggest question I had, which I was hoping to answer for you, was why would you choose one over the other? If you take a look at the back of them, they both have similar inputs and outputs. This bigger one obviously has you know, more traditional layout, more traditional metal cabinets. Um, you have, um, you have you know, analog ends, you have two of them here. Uh, we have two line ends here, which would be two analog ends. Uh, we do have a coaxial and an optical in. Uh, we have, this one has two coaxial ends and two opticals. Uh, again, I don't see what you're gonna be connecting with either of those. Uh, the only device I'm gonna connect to one of these would be an Apple TV uh, for streaming, but Apple TV only has HDMI output, doesn't have optical anymore. So uh, this would be, you know, you're gonna connect a CD player, a DVD player, a Blu-ray player, but it's a stereo device anyway. Uh, you might as well just, just stream, stream video and audio if you're going to set up your system. Um, they both have um, an HDMI. Uh, wait, does this one have the HDMI arc? This one does not. Uh, so this one has an HDMI audio return channel, which so we could set up our TV like I talked about before. Again, you can't run an Apple TV unless you ran an Apple TV to your TV and then an HDMI connection back, uh, which is really clunky. I don't like that at all. I feel like your chances of uh, failure are much higher. You know, HDMI is a finicky connection. So this is simpler, easier. This is more upgradable. Uh, so you notice this slot right here? It's called the MDC slot. Uh, what you can do, you can buy for another 380 bucks you can buy one of these modules. You can take this module, this board, and I could add HDMI switching. So like my house, my garage, I've got a, a um, you know, an Apple TV 4K, and then I've got the M33 with that MDC module, and I'm able to run the HDMI in and then HDMI out. It sounds kind of clunky, but it's, um, it's, it's the, the way to go. So if I want to run Apple TV, I'm buying this. If I don't care and I'm just and I'm not going to run a TV at all, um, then you know then, then now the consideration comes on which which one fits better. I spent a lot of time sitting and listening to these two. Um, you know they're both rated at 80 watts per channel, and 80 is very conservative, so don't get hung up on the 80 watts. It drove my power hungry. I even hooked it up to uh, the. The, um, the, the floor standing uh, Evoke uh, 30s, which are, you know, again, 86, 85, 86 dB sensitivity. The higher the number, the more efficient, like a Klipsch. It's like 96, 97 dB sensitivity uh, with a horn-loaded driver. Um, it's just much, much more efficient than, than like a big, you know, power-hungry speaker like, like a Dynaudio can be. The sound difference was hard to tell. I... I can't believe that this little guy at 10 pounds versus this 22 pound thing, with, I, I can't, I have to believe that the power supply in this is more robust. But yet the functionality, the way that this thing sounds, the way that it works, um, they're really with neither, with either one of these, you're just gonna play this, the native audio right out of the box, right out of, right out of title. You're not gonna jack bass and treble. Um, you're not gonna mess with that. You're gonna run it flat and your speakers are gonna sound like they're supposed to sound. Um, you'd be hard pressed to, you know, unless you had them both here back and forth. This one sounds a little brighter. Maybe the sound stage is a little bigger. This one gives me a little bit more bottom end, a little more mid bass, I think. Um, I might just be making that up. I'm looking for I'm looking for um, for for things to, to to make it make make me tell a difference. Uh, but the big metal box, 
I think you're buying and you're going to buy an HDMDC module and you're going to run HDMI if you want to run Apple TV in your garage. I think this one, if you're not going to run Apple TV, you're just going to use either no TV or you're going to run it uh, with uh, you know an HDMI cable from your TV to this. Uh, this is prettier, it's smaller, takes up less space, runs a tiny bit cooler. Uh, and uh, I think that this device is, uh, is a really, really great option. Uh, we'll talk about this in a second, but basically what they did is they took the $2,750 M10, took all the excess out, and just made a really simple thing. My wager is that in the next few years, um, these things will probably go away. Uh, they'll probably transition to something, you know, and, and do just these. And then hopefully they'll be adding uh, HDMI switching to these devices soon. So 80 watts, 80 watts, 1500 bucks, 1600 bucks. Uh, MDC module upgradable. Uh, both have Blue OS. Both have the same system. You could run this on the same app and switch back and forth between any of these devices, including the Blue Sound stuff. It's really pretty freaking awesome uh, for anything, let alone the garage. I'm telling you, this stuff. Uh, NAD is perfection for the garage. Blue Sound was just cherry on the top for me uh, because they've spent so much time. I think that other than them and maybe Name and AIM um, and a few other more obscure companies, they're the ones that have really devoted and spent a lot of time and energy building streaming stereo integrated amplifiers uh, and have focused on that application. And then we have Class D amplification, which works perfectly for the garage uh, because um, of heat, you know, and a lot of us don't have air conditioned garages. So to me, it was a perfect combination. I was hoping to do something from audio control, uh, but nobody is as sophisticated in this world uh, and has done as good of a job as NAD has. So it's, it's a match made in heaven for what I'm looking to accomplish here in the garage. Then if you need, this is if you start to get into you know, bigger, more expensive speakers or you just want a little bit more amplitude, a little bit more output, as well as more clarity, a bit more mid-bass punch, you can go up to one of the big boys. So this is the C388. There's also a C399 coming. Uh, the C399 is 185 watts per channel. This is a 388. This is 150 watts per channel. It's essentially identical to the C368. Um, you do have a B channel. Uh, does the 368 have that? I wouldn't recommend you do this anyway. Yeah, it does. Uh, this one is a little bulkier. This weighs about 30 pounds, so the power supply on this is bigger for the bigger amplifier. Um, same basic idea here. You would run an MDC module uh, and you could run you know, HDMI switching on this as well. 150 watts per channel. It's, um, it's I mean, I like this thing a lot. Um, this amplifier in this sounds fantastic to me. In many ways, I think this amplifier sounds better than the M33 that I'm running in my garage. Uh, and um, the other thing that uh, seems a bit odd, they're not, they're not publishing. These must be you know, 24, 192, you know, I don't know if they're Sabre or if they're, um, you know, who's making the, the DACs, the digital analog converter chips. They're not publishing them, so they might be NAD chips. So they're not some fancy chip where uh, they're publishing that, like on the M10. The M10 has some fancy chipset in it where it's um, uh, the 32-bit, 38 kilohertz ESS Sabre DAX. You know, so the the M10 does does provide some some um, I guess some fancier fancier chipsets, more expensive chipsets. So the M10 is pretty much the prettiest darn thing I've ever seen on the planet. Notice the gloss finish. Notice the insane display. Uh, this one is full touchscreen. There is no volume control knob. There's no source knob. Everything is done via touchscreen. Uh, this is the version two of the M10. When I first got the M10, the previous gen I thought sounded terrible out of the box. This one actually sounds really great out of the box without doing any calibration. Um, they've added and put the same binding posts that they have on the M33. So this is part of the master series. Um, this one here um, is, I think, I think this foots the bill for, for being part of the master series. It comes double boxed like this. I'm always interested in what the box looks like. Um, I'll save you the, um, I'll save the excitement um, that you'll have when you open it, so I won't, I won't, I won't uh, steal that from you. Uh, but I'm telling you, when you open up the the box, it's uh, about as close as Apple 
Apple quality packaging as uh, as I've seen from any you know any of these uh, these uh, devices that I've been I've been opening up seems the higher end the equipment the worse they are the more homemade everything is but with this stuff uh, NAD really knocked it out of the park with this this M10 so the version two what they've added they did new mind binding post on it. Clearly, they've changed the base sound signature of it. I think it sounds different. Uh, this is 100 watts per channel, so less power. This was $2,250 today. This is $2,750, so more expensive. I think the biggest uh, increase in cost is this does have Dirac Live. Uh, we could spend another box and get Dirac Live full room correction. Um, so this comes with a microphone. Uh, and uh, you plug this into the USB output on the back. It comes with a microphone, and you can run a full, you know, multi, you know, 20 plus point uh, room calibration, room correction. It works extremely well. It's the best that we have today. The other thing that they added to this, um, I told you I don't like the Blue Sound speakers, but you could run this in four channels. So you can run it 4.1 with some powered speakers. Um, wirelessly so this will recognize the blue OS app will recognize if you run to run like pulse rear um, rear blue blue sounds rear speakers um, you could easily do that it will connect via the blue sound app uh, and then they did one other thing what was it oh and they've enabled um, Dolby surround so there's Dolby surround decoding as well on this if you were going to use this for that application but again there's no ability to do HDMI switching on this. If you look at the back, you have a HDMI eARC or audio return channel connection. <clears throat> Again, you could very easily run if you're, you know, using an LG TV or a Sony TV, you could very easily just send the audio back to this via audio return. Uh, you're not going to be running Dolby Atmos or anything that that audio return may not support uh, and you should be fine if uh, if this thing tickles your fancy. It, I, I swear, they, they said, I was on a call with Len Brook when they were presenting this with NAD and they said that really not much has changed other than those three things. The price hasn't changed uh, other than the binding post, the wireless rear speakers, and the and the Dolby Dolby um, uh, edition, uh, but I uh, I swear it sounds different. It sounds better, uh, and uh, I'm actually really pleased with how this sounds, especially after you tune it, after you calibrate it. This to me still sounds better. Old school, big heavy box. Uh, this has the same Blue OS functionality. We're selling the Blue OS version. If you look online, you're looking at pricing. They sell this without Blue OS for less. I think it's like 17, 1800 bucks. 2250 with the blue os uh, connectivity which you absolutely want for streaming remember remote control is my um is my phone so one thing i failed to mention the remote controls they're useless you're going to open it up you're going to put the batteries in you're never ever going to use them i can pretty much promise you that you're going to use the blue os app on all of these this is the remote control for the m10 the c700 doesn't come with one the um, the C three sixty eight and three eighty eight both come with the uh, the SR nine NAD remote, which is old and ugly and pretty much useless. Uh, again, you're going to control volume. You're going to turn it. You're probably going to turn it on by walking up to it and touching it, uh, and or just leave it on because they run so cool. You could probably just leave it on forever if you wanted to. Uh, there is a setting on them where you can go and have it not ever turn off. Uh, if you wanted to do that, but uh, don't get too excited about remote controls because I'm telling you, you're not going to use them. So the combinations of these um, are going to be, um, you know, various speakers that we provide. Uh, you can use the speakers that you have. Um, I think this simply comes down to money, um, how much you're willing to spend, uh, and then size. You know, and and then the secondary question is. I guess the first question would be money. Second question would be, what am I going to use it for? Am I going to connect the TV to it or not? None of these are surround sound. These are all stereo with the exception of this that can do four channel, uh, four channel, 4.1 surround sound. Um, the, they can all connect to a subwoofer. They can all do you know, stereo streaming, high resolution music. They all use Blue OS. They're all set up pretty much the same way. Uh, you're going to plug your speaker wires in, and that's basically it. Plug it into the wall, uh, and um, I think it just comes down to you know what are you going to what are you going to do with it. 
I think um, at this point, uh, for most garages, I think I'm going to suggest you know either the M10 or the C700 uh, if you can swing it. You know, so these guys are the way to go. Uh, I think that the bigger, older school, which I was until today, I was I wasn't sold on these until I spent the time you know playing with these and really listening to them, setting them up, tuning them a bit, seeing what um, seeing how it sounds. I think um, I think this was a uh, this was an epiphany for me that these um, the this is the way it's headed. Um, digital amplification or class D amplification, all digital connectivity, getting rid of all the fluff, and then having the ability to you know to be able to play you know dec even decently power hungry speakers with some of this really really cool tech. That's another thing that um, I forgot to mention on the on the uh, V2. Uh, this actually has two, and I think this is the first NAD uh, processor to have this. I don't even believe the M17, the big surround sound processor. This has independent subwoofer outputs, so you can calibrate channel one, channel two subwoofers. You can ca calibrate your subwoofers independently. The ones in the past, including the M33, it has uh, a single, it basically just has a Y adapter inside of the device, so your subwoofers are just receiving the same signal. So I could theoretically calibrate my subwoofers independently on this uh, and set the volume level and crossover at different, different, um, uh, different settings if I wanted to. So yeah, conclusion, you've got these five choices, the sixth being the M33 if you've got deep pockets and you want the best. Uh, but the conclusion for me is you buy whichever one you can afford or which one you can justify, which one you value, uh, work your way up the line. Um, I'm always going to choose, you know, choose the, the more expensive option. And then you would buy the 368 or 388 or 399. Uh, when the 399 comes out, it's going to be 2550. Uh, the 399 is going to sound better than any of these. Um, and so the 399 is going to be the way to go out of all of these. Uh, but, um, but if you're looking for something tight, compact, beautiful, put something, if you're, even if, especially if you're going to put it prominently out on display, one of the C700 or, or M10 is going to be the way to go. So I'm excited for, for the audio capability of all these devices. Uh, and uh, make sure you hit us up uh, at, uh, you, know, you can email me if you like, matt at obsessedgarage.com or support at obsessedgarage.com if you don't want to wait for me. And um, we can, we'll continue to provide you answers with how to set up audio in the garage. Uh, or again, if you want to translate this into the house, we can help you with that as well. But these puppies, I think, are the way to go. I would much rather have an independent, separate system per room uh, and then have the Blue OS app as my connector rather than doing distributed audio throughout my house. So if you need some help with that and would like my advice there, I'd be happy to provide you what, uh, what I've learned and my experience with it. So thanks for your support. Um, hope this uh, video is helpful and uh, we'll be sure to uh, gather more data and provide you more resources. I'm going to continue to buy all this stuff and try it. This is what 10 grand 15 grand worth of stuff sitting on the table here just so i can figure out which one i want personally uh, luckily you guys buy this stuff to help justify and help me afford to be able to do that uh, but i have been playing with these for hours and hours and been thinking about them for months and months and uh, these are the five that that made the cut for for my um, potential application to put in your garage so thanks for watching see you soon